Jane Wells of CNBC, Jan O'Caldwell, conservative political analyst for the Fox News Channel, and Professor, Professor Jessica Levinson of Loyola Law School. Great to have you all here. Pleasure to be here. And you're a former uh, Fox 11 reporter, so it's good I to have am. you back in the house, it's, right? Uh, a few familiar faces. It's <laughs> nice to be back. Okay, let's talk about the big story. North Korea, the president saying that this is a great deal for the American people. Some critics are saying... You didn't really get anything. There's nothing verifiable in this. You think this was a good deal? I think it's a good start. If anybody thought a deal was going to come out of this, then you're just insane. Look, my son's a Marine stationed in Japan. Six months ago, I was terrified for his safety. I'm not terrified now. Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, this, this, this dorky f film they made and all that. But this could be the start of something. And, Alex, if there is some kind of peace on the Korean Peninsula... By 2020, uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit back and see what happens. Well, let's speaking of that film. Let's show that right now. <laughs> this is the what some are calling a propaganda film. This idea of basically creating a trailer for Kim Jong Un. Let's show that and get your reaction to that. Will he shake the hand of peace and enjoy prosperity like he has never seen? A great life or more isolation? I mean, is this the way to do to do democracy <laughs> with Miami Vice well, speedboats? Uh, what we can admit to is this administration has been very unconventional. So we can say that when we look at the summit, 54 percent of Americans says, said that it was a success. I think one of the largest issues that we must think about is how can you verify that these test sites have been shut down? All right, and Jane, our question for you about the economy, that's your specialty. Uh, we've got really good economic news, but then we also have this, this $50 billion in tariffs uh, that the U.S. is going to be putting on to China, China now retaliating. Are we about to have a trade war, and could that really hurt all this economic progress? Uh, okay, it's, we do have a trade war. Prices will probably go up on a few things. Uh, at the same time, U.S. steel is just firing up a defunct plant in the U.S. because demand for domestic steel is now up because of these tariffs. Uh, I'm the sort of person that says, you may not like this president. He has broken the mold. But if by 2020 we have GDP growth near 4%, yeah. we've got a market like this, we've got record low unemployment, we've got more jobs than job applicants, yeah. and even our allies start to say, we don't like you, but let's do something to make trade, we've got to have you, and yeah. our trade deficit starts to shrink, and maybe we have peace in Korea, <laughs> how do you not reelect this guy, even if you think he's a buffoon? Yeah. What about the racism? Is people are going to say, I don't like him, he's a racist, he's a misogynist, uh, poor illegal uh, immigrants, but I'm doing better than I was four years ago. America is safer than it was four years ago. The economy's doing better. There are more jobs. And I just don't know how that gets defeated because it's the economy, stupid. And it more importantly, Democrats don't have a candidate that they can put up against them. But to your, your point, though, he has provided some gravitas to some of these claims in terms of how you've spoken about issues concerning race, and I think that's important uh, to mention. Oh, I think he's provided so much national and international embarrassment when it comes to race. I mean, I think he's an avowed racist, misogynist, and pathological liar. And I think he's not a buffoon. I think he's someone who looks up to dictators. So I think people will vote based on the economy because that's a rational decision for voters. But I think it's an enormous embarrassment nationally and internationally if that happens. I think it'll be the year, this could be the first time an independent candidate, if you have Joe Biden as a Democrat and Donald Trump as a Republican, say, in the middle, are you going to get Howard Schultz? Are you going to get Bernie Sanders? Who is it? Michael Bloomberg? All male names, Kanye by the West. way. Yeah. yeah, well, I just think this could be the first time uh, in, in decades that an independent candidate may, may be viable. I don't know. Well, we've got to leave it there for now. Up next, how does this sound? Three separate Californias? It's now on the ballot. We're going to talk about that next when the issue has come back. How about that? Are you feeling the California love? Well, a billionaire wants to split our state into three. That idea now on the ballot. Our panel is back to weigh in on that. Jessica, yes. what do you think? Do you think from a legal perspective this is interesting? I think this is interesting from a policy perspective, even though it's absolutely not going to happen. Let me say that again. There is no way in which this is going to happen. From a legal perspective, it's fascinating because there are both federal and state issues. One is that if we pass this on the ballot, which, again, we won't,
then it has to go to Congress. Congress, which is kind of the face of an action, I think is going to not be particularly excited to do this. If then Congress says yes, I think that the California legislature under the federal constitution still has to say thumbs up. If there's 120 people in California who do not want to give up power, go to Sacramento, find them. They will not vote for this. And then the question is, is it actually a revision under the California constitution? Answer is probably yes, which is another way of saying this proposal, which would create <laughs> Three amazing states of inequality is unlikely to see the light of and day. And go to the courts. Do, do, do either of you guys think it's a good idea? Uh, no, here's why. Although it would allow Gavin Newsom, John Cox, and Antonio Villarigosa to all be governors. <laughs> uh, Another I, bad part of the proposal. Yeah, here's <laughs> why I think it's a bad idea. It, it, despite the fact that most of the revenue generation going on in this state would now be in Northern California, which is why the way it would also be part of the Sacramento. Water. We would now be in an right. area where we would have to import water from out of state, and that would cost us way too much. Although it would be good to have more senators, because we've got 40 million people in states with less than a million have yeah. as many Democrats senators as we do. Democrats would love that, because yes. we'd have more Democratic senators. That's one way to look at it, too. Uh, we're going to be back with a special Father's Day message right after this. Happy Father's Day weekend. From the time I was a little boy, my dad, David, played his favorite artist for me, the boss, Bruce Springsteen. There we are at a concert. I wouldn't be the man I am today without him. I wouldn't be hosting this show without him. I love you, Dad. And now, fight on to you as well. Uh, now we're going to give our panel uh, opportunity oh, to talk about their dad. Uh, that is Ed Wells. That picture is probably from the year 1842. My dad was a fourth out of five kids. He was an older dad. He was so mellow and always would send me notes when I became a reporter and moved out of state saying, even if you lived next door, you would still be too far away. And then, it, then he'd stick like five bucks in there. Yeah, this is Jessica. <laughs> This is my dad with my daughter because we have no good pictures of the two of us. <laughs> and he is the first lawyer I ever met. And he's just a wonderful person. Right now, he really enjoys being a grandfather more than anything. Mm. But he's taught me so much about civic engagement. And he's an important member of the community. And Gianno? And this is my dad. I'm from Chicago, so I'm not from here. I'm actually flying out. His name is Anthony Williams. I'll be in Chicago with my grandfather and my dad, taking them to dinner. Follow the cute moments on Instagram at Gianno Caldwell. Wow, I'm at Alex Michelson. Way to give your shout out. <laughs> you can see all of us on bonus issues online right now. It's streaming on my YouTube and Facebook pages as well. Check us out. We're going to talk about a lot more. But that's it for this week on TV. Happy Father's Day to everybody at home. Yeah.